I'm Jenny Carlson. Welcome to the Jenny and Barry Show. The Thunder's opponent for the Western Conference semifinals is set. Finally, the Mavericks now stand between the Thunder and the Conference Finals. We'll talk about the challenge the Mavs present, plus whether this long layoff will make any difference for the Thunder. But first, we want to say thanks to these sponsors for supporting the Jenny and Barry Show. MidFirst Bank. Next Gen Roofing. Two Fellows Movers. The Oklahoma Ford Dealers Association. Drive into your best in Oklahoma Ford Dealers today for the best deals on Ford's full lineup of trucks and SUVs. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. And I want to ask you to subscribe to our show. Just hit that subscribe button on YouTube. It's easy, but it helps us to help you. So subscribe today. Well, joining me on the Jenny and Barry show, not Barry Trammell, Bobby Howard, director of social media for Sellout Crowd. Thanks for joining me today. Happy to be here. Uh, I feel like me coming in to uh, replace Barry is like Samaj Christian replacing Russell Westbrook. But, you know, I'm happy to be here and uh, I'll do my best. Maybe I could bump it up to a Ray Felton or a DJ, Dennis Schroeder. So we'll see how it goes. Well, let's 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 just hope that this goes great because I have very high hopes because we've got lots to talk about. Thunder related, Mavs related. Uh, first of all, Bobby. Let's talk about this series starting Tuesday evening. It's been eight days off for the Thunder. I mean, just a crazy long layoff. The Celtics, who also swept their series, have six. But the eight-day thing is just a crazy amount of days for a team to be off during the playoffs. And frankly, Bobby, we've seen a lot with the NBA, them wait to see how series progress. And then they've done stuff where they've, you know, a, have a day break after teams are done and they start that next series. The Mavs finished up on Friday night. Had they held to that standard, Sunday could have well been game one. Instead, wait till Tuesday, eight days. Is is this good for the Thunder to have a layoff like this? I mean, it's a double-edged sword. Anytime you have a long lay or layoff, um, I mean, Looking at the end of that Pelican series, you saw Russell, or Russell Westbrook, uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander, <laughs> a little beat up there. Yeah. Um, you know, towards the end, you know, he t- turned his ankle in game four, looked like he was having some other foot related pain as well. So getting him uh, rested and healthy is good. Uh, we've seen how good a rested Chet Holmgren can be. Yeah. Um, but how much rest is too much rest? Eight days is a long, long layoff, uh, especially when you consider that uh, the week before, um, the week before that Pelican series started, there was a long wait for, um, you know, the play in to figure out. So right, right. not a lot of basketball uh, being played in the past couple of weeks. Um, yeah. Rhythm is important, but rest is important. So I would, I would prefer to have less, uh, you know, than eight days, but you know, it's not the worst uh, thing in the world. Well, and you're right. The amount of games that the Thunder has played in the last three weeks amounts to four games since the end of the regular season for this team. They have only played four games in three weeks. It's just an almost unheard of uh, limited amount of games during the playoffs. And I agree. I think the rest is great. You know, I think the fact that the Thunder had to handle this going into the first round probably is a benefit to them now. You know, they handled it really well. Um, I think we, you know, we saw them maybe not play great in game one against the Pelicans, but I think that was as much just first time in the playoffs for, uh, you know, the, the Jalen Williamses, Josh Giddy, uh, you know, Kaysen Wallace, Chet Holmgren. I mean, first playoff game, you were going to have some of that regardless of whether they had a couple days off or a long rest. So I think that that was more about just getting acclimated to the playoffs, but they handled it well. Played well in that series, obviously swept the Pelicans. So having that standard uh, sort of in the in the rearview mirror, very recent past, that has to be helpful too. Um, but here's the thing I wonder, Bobby. You've got the, the Mavs and the Clippers. They go six games, tough series, and yet they get rewarded as well. The Mavs do by only – they don't have to turn right back around and start this series on Sunday. They get rest as well. And we've seen Luka Doncic uh, sort of hobbling around on a knee that seems a little gimpy. He's had an illness, I think. It feels like to me that eight days off for the Thunder, you know, there's kind of positives and negatives there. But some time off for the Mavericks, that feels a little bit 
I mean, it just is, it's, un, again, I go back to what I said earlier, the NBA so rarely works this way. I don't quite understand what happened here. It's, I, I really wish I could understand the mindset with the scheduling here, especially when you look at uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves and Denver Nuggets series. Yeah. Game one and two will already have been played by the time game one tips off of the Thunder. They're yeah. going to have a layoff or a, a, a delay between, um, I believe they'll play on Monday, and then next time we'll see that those two teams will be on Friday. So it's it's a long wait for them as well. It's just kind of a wonky schedule right now. Yeah. I, I feel like um, I feel like they could have worked it a little bit better because um, you're right. The Mavs that that turnaround not that punishing, honestly, all things considered. Um, so I, I'm with you. I think, I think the Mavericks, you know, really helped themselves out finishing that series in six, uh, rather than letting it go the full seven. Yeah, for sure. They definitely got some much needed rest for, for Luca by uh, what I said earlier, that knee, I think any extra time where he doesn't have to play is a benefit to him and to the Mavericks, which brings us to our first matchup question, Bobby, bigger concern in your mind, is it Luca or is it his back uh, court mate, Kyrie Irving? Well, here's the thing is I think overall, Luca clearly is the scarier player to go against. Yeah. However, right now, it's not just the knee. It's not just the weird, like, kind of flu that has uh, Mavs fans, I don't want to say concerned, but a little worried about Luca. His shot's been off. Um, his mechanics are looking weird right now. It's, it's, it's just kind of unusual from him. He's still performing pretty well. And I think you got to say Kyrie Irving because... Even though Luka Doncic hasn't played, very, did not play very well in that first round series against the Clippers, the Mavericks looked great at times, and I think that's that's a credit to Kyrie Irving, what he's been able to do in terms of uh, you know captain that ship, um, and you know at times when Kyrie's on, he's one of the most unstoppable players in the league. He's gotten back to that form uh, at times, so I would say right now Kyrie, just given uh, Luka's current run of form. But, I mean, that can change in an instant if yeah. Luka gets gets back to the Luka Doncic we've been seeing for the past couple of years. And I think both of them have the ability to go nuclear. I mean, just have a, a stretch where, you know, they hit everything they shoot. You know, they really can't be stopped. Uh, I think that they both have that ability, and we've seen it. I mean, they both have those humongous scoring games, you know, 50, 60 points, those sorts of things. Kyrie had 40 in the, in the playoff series against the Clippers. So he's kind of had that nuclear game a little more recently. And he had that late performance in game six, which was unbelievable as well. He has the ability to flip it on and get really hot and dangerous really quickly. So I think you're right. I think right now the more nuclear option on those two is probably Kyrie. But Luca is such the director. He's such the maestro for the Mavs. Leads to the next question. Who guards who? We saw Lou Dort have that great series against Brandon Ingram when pretty much everybody knew that Ingram was scoring option, you know, 1, 1A, one 1B, one all of that. He was the main guy for the Pelicans without Zion Williamson. So now these Mavs have two. Who is Lou Dort guarding? Who guards who in this series, Bobby? So Lou Dort, I think right now what I would do is put him on Luca. Just the larger size. Um, you know, I feel like Lou Dort is more he, he's more befitted to stop a guy like Luka Doncic. You know, it it, it Case and Wallace, also a great defender, but for me, I, I think Lou on Luca, that's what you want to hap uh, happen. I feel like uh, Dort, he's the level of defender that can completely take a guy like Luka Doncic out of a game. And he's like one of the few defenders that I would say could possibly hold a candle to stopping a guy like Luka. Um, at the same time, if Kyrie gets hot, you might want to shift Dort on there, throw in a Case and Wallace, you know, maybe mix up some looks, uh, put in uh, J-Dub, Jalen Williams in there to kind of slow him down. He's been a pretty effective uh, defender here and there. Maybe a little bit too, um, I don't want to say overrated, but I feel like the national, some national people look at uh, Jalen Williams as one of the better defenders on the team. And I, not, I think he's pretty solid. I don't think he's a Lou Dort level. I don't think he's a Case and no. Wallace level. He's no. pretty good. Um, and the Thunder have options, you know, to really throw a lot of looks at those two guys uh, that I think, I think it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. And that's something that I think we'll see shift over the series. One guy who I don't feel like will get a lot of burn uh, against the Mavericks, Josh Giddy. though. I, yeah. I feel like, I feel like def that 
his defensive abilities make him a little bit of a liability out there. So I would I would say stock up for uh, Case and Wallace, Lou Dort, stock down for Giddy. Yeah, we'll talk maybe a little bit more about Giddy in a second when we talk about the Mavs pick and roll. But I agree with you about Lou Dort. I think he has to start on Luka Doncic. And if Kyrie hits that nuclear option at some point, I think the switch has to happen. But I don't know if you saw this, Bobby, but there was a, a picture going around social media of actually uh, Thunder era Russell Westbrook when they played a uh, exhibition game early one season against Luca's team when he was still overseas before he came to the NBA. And Luca looks like kind of just a normal human being in the picture. He's not much bigger or not much smaller than Russell, you know, just looked like a teenager, which he was at the time. But to see him now and to see the bulk that he has put on and just the ability that he has to use that, you know, he's obviously very skilled, very talented, very gifted. He can get where he needs to go, but he can also bully with that size. He's just got that ability with his body build now to really get after guys. And to me, I think what you said earlier is exactly right. To me, Lou Dort physically, and then you add in the ability of what he can do. I mean, this is this is the type of guy that you need a Lou Dort for because, you know, a guy that's taller, okay, maybe that's fine, but does he get bullied by Luca's size when he wants to get a spot, um, when he wants to get some space? You know, I think Lou Dort has the has the the build to hang with him. And I'm I'm reflecting in my mind as I think about that matchup on like off seasons in the past when Lou Dort would come back for the start of camp and be like, yeah, I did jujitsu this uh, off season. I did, <laughs> I did karate or whatever. You know, I'm like, he's doing that stuff for these matchups to really try to have the ability to slow down a Luka Doncic. So I think, yeah, I think you start there and then just depending on how things are going, if Kyrie starts to heat up, feels like to me, then Lou Dort has the ability to slide over and be the guy on him. But I think you got to start. Uh, Dort on Luca, so that that to me is a is a for sure. Now let's flip it. Let's flip the script for a second, Bobby. When the Mavs are thinking about defending the Thunder, when they're thinking about their matchups, who are they going to have at the top of their list? Who's who's the biggest concern for them from the Thunder? Well, I mean, of course, number one has to be Shea Gilgis Alexander. Um, Agree. As he if he gets his consistent numbers, you know, across the board. As he goes, the thunder will go. You know, the rest will fill in. Um, but Shea, if you can, if you can slow him or if you can slow him down, you know, frustrate him, make make him not get his, uh, you know, get the looks that he likes, then you know, the thunder kind of they don't they don't operate the way they usually do. They kind of break down. They the little they're a little bit choppier than usual. Um, so if you're if you're the Mavericks, you got to be concerned about uh, SGA for sure. Um, other than that, I mean, you know, I, I think, you know, you just kind of pick, pick and choose whoever's hot that day, you know, that there's the depth is, is scary because you don't know who's going to step up and have a big night. The Mavericks know very well that Isaiah Joe could come in and hit some threes against you and, and yeah. knock him, knock you, knock you dead. Uh, Aaron Wiggins might have a big game. You just don't know where it's going to come from. And then, of course, you know, Jalen Williams, uh, where Derek Jones Jr., he's going to have uh, his hands full there. Um so I, 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 it starts starts with Shea, but right. there there are way more issues beyond just Shea Gilgis Alexander. How much of a concern do you feel like some of the guys you just mentioned are bench guys for the Thunder? How much of a concern should that depth? I think that has to be. That's not a player, obviously, and and I do think SGA. You've got to figure out a way to keep him contained as best you can, make his looks really hard. You know, I think what the what the Pelicans did to a degree. Um, is probably, you know, put him in a crowd as often as you can because one guy probably isn't going to be able to keep him from getting inside and sort of doing his weaving to the basket that he seems to vaporize through spots <laughs> to get to the other side sometimes. But I, I wonder if that depth and the fact that the Mavs, you know, they have invested so much in Luca, so much in Kyrie, that the pieces around them are – they're not terrible. I'm not saying that, but the number, you know, you think about the Thunder playing 10, 11 guys in that first round series, you know, game after game after game, whether they get great production or not. But I have to think that depth might be, uh, you know, a character in this drama 
that the Mavs may have some trouble with. I, it feels like to me, I don't know, do you feel like the bench has to outscore the Mavs bench by, I don't know, 15 a game, 20 a game? Does there need to be sort of a, a line that you want to see that Thunder bench get to? Um, I don't know if there's exactly a number because it's it it's tricky because the Mavs bench, if they're playing well, um, you know, it, it it ultimately matters whether or not Kyrie and Luka Doncic are on. You know, the right. bench can fill in, and it, it it's one of it's like one of one of two things: either the bench is really good and one of Luka or Kyrie's off, or Kyrie and Luka are going nuclear and the bench didn't matter in the at the end. Yeah. So I'm I'm intrigued to see how that works. I will say for the Mavericks, you know, their depth was an issue earlier this season. Trades helped help that out significantly, bringing in uh, Daniel Gafford and PJ Washington. But um, I mean, yesterday, massive news, you know, with the loss of Maxi Kleba, who yeah. has been a massive playoff performer for them. So I think I, I think bench depth is so, so important in this in this series. I fully agree. Um, and I, I think I think that will in a way you know, determine or flip some games uh, as we go into the series. You know, as we talk about that depth, maybe being a character within this series uh, all on its own, it feels like to me that the Mavs pick and roll lob game may be its own character in this drama, um, you know, with Gafford, who you mentioned earlier, Derek Lively. They just really seem like, and obviously Luka Doncic leading the way. I mean, he's he's a maestro when it comes to that stuff. So that lob game, you know, and sort of, uh, you know, it's it's unlike anything that we saw with the, with the uh, Pelicans in that first series. I mean, that's not not to say they didn't do that some, but that's not their style. That's not their game. Had the had the Clippers gotten through much more of an ISO game, but this Mavs pick and roll thing is something the Thunder has now seen. Well. Four times in reality, but really three times with the actual guys that you need to worry about because that last game of the regular season, <laughs> so many so many Mavs missing. I don't know if we can really even count that, but three times they've seen this, Bobby. And obviously they didn't have Gafford early in the season, but how much does that lob game concern you, that pick and roll game concern you? What's the key for the Thunder as it prepares to defend not just Luka, not just Kyrie, but that pick and roll. Well, the Thunder have already seen the nightmare scenario of when yeah. that pick and roll goes to the next level. And it was in that only loss to the Mavericks this year where they lost by 30. It was a Saturday afternoon game. And uh, I believe it was Daniel Gafford's first, like he just had been traded. It was his debut day one and yeah. he tore the Thunder up. <laughs> um, so I think that pick and roll game is, is absolutely going to be, I mean, just gnarly to defend. Um, Chet will have his Chet will have his hands full, and you know you'll have to consider you know maybe adding in you know Jay Will Jalen Williams uh, into the equation a little bit uh, to you know maybe you know maybe stock the pain a little bit. Um, and I think that's that's going to be a major factor of this is if the Mavericks can you know force the Thunder to make moves to stop you know that pick and roll to stop uh, try to nullify what uh, Lively and Gafford do down low. That is a that that is a sign that the Mavericks are probably doing things the right way. It, it's it's going to be a battle of styles. Um, will the Mavericks big heavy uh, like pick and roll style? Like will that win out over the Thunder small ball, or will the Thunder small ball force the Mavericks to like kind of shy away from going big? That is going to be the the, the tug of war, the philosophical tug tug of war at the heart of the series. Yeah, it felt like to me that that first round series was much more common styles maybe not a hundred percent common but they felt much more similar you know the the pelicans with a lot of interchangeable parts guys that could you know switch and play defense on you know different size guys the thunder does that as well you know much more of an of, uh, of an offensive flow that you know moves the ball those sorts of things so this is this is definitely a different style and i think the fact that the thunder have seen it they have played against it you know, I think that that they've learned well, Bobby. I think that that's one of the things that stands out to me about this team is as they've played teams in the regular season, they learned lessons well. They learned lessons well as a coaching staff, individual players. I mean, think about that 
I can't remember if it was the first game of the season or second. They play the Nuggets, get absolutely their doors blown off. And you could see the next time they played Denver, they learned some lessons and they figured some things out. So I'm with you. I think it it's it's got to be concerning because that's when the the uh, nugget the nuggets the <laughs> Mavericks can really get going when they get that pick and roll going. And you also got the the one on one ability of Luca and Kyrie. But the Thunder's seen it. They know what it takes. And defensively, they've really locked in so far in these playoffs. So it will be a different kind of challenge but I like their ability to meet the challenge and, uh, and potentially win the challenge, which leads us to this, Bobby. Drum roll time. Who wins this thing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to go. Look, I think it's going to be a really tough, tight series. I'm going to go uh, with the Thunder and Six, though. Uh, yeah. I, feel like the, I feel like Oklahoma City has a coaching advantage over Jason Kidd, uh, Mark Dagnalt. Um, I we didn't see a lot of him switching up and adjusting as that Pelican series went on, but I know he has it in him, and I feel like he has that advantage, that added edge, especially when you when it comes to late game situations to make the right moves, to make the uh, interchangeable moves. I think that's going to be a key key part there. Um, the Mavericks depth gives me a little bit of pause, you know, especially without Kleba, who I feel like would have been, I mean, just a perfect player to play against the Thunder. Uh, his ability to be three and D um, and ultimately uh, just at the end of the day, I feel like Oklahoma city has the defenders to slow down Luca and Kyrie Irving. You know, yeah. the Clippers don't have a Lou Dort. Not many people have a Lou Dort. I, like that, that just, <laughs> there's, he's like a kind of a one of one right now. And I'm going to go as far to say this Lou Dort is going to be the most important player in this series. Ooh. Yeah. That's that might be a, it, it is a series of stars of big names, but the most important player for the Oklahoma City Thunder is going to be Lugans Dort. His ability to defend Luka and Kyrie, his ability to hit big threes when 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 possible. It's he's he is in my opinion the most important player on this playoff run just because of his ability to show up during big playoff games and uh take the hard assignment and still produce well offensively. Um Ultimately, I just I feel like the Thunder they're gonna maybe struggle a little early, drop a couple, may, maybe drop a game one. I could see, but yeah. I feel like the adjustments over the series will allow them to figure it out. And I don't think I, I just don't think the Mavericks have as many levers to pull as the Thunder do. Uh, yeah, as, as many adjustments they can make, they just have to hope Luca and Kyrie go nuclear. You know, it, <laughs> it, 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 yeah. you know, at some point you just run out of ammo. So that's my yeah. thought on it. Thunder and six. Hey, I think it's going to be a great series too. And I'm like you, I could see the Thunder losing one of these first two at home, but I do think they've got the ability to, to adjust in ways that, that the, uh, the Mavericks don't. And what you said about Lou Dort, I think he's already been the most important player for the Thunder in the playoffs. So it would be a continuation really of just how important he has been. But yeah, I mean, I think, I think he sets the tone for the entire defense. Obviously, what he does in a one-on-one -on -one matchup is so important, but repeatedly in the first round, we heard guys talking about when you see a guy giving that much effort, fighting over screens to stay on uh, Brandon Ingram as much as he did, just the effort that Lou Dort gave it was really sort of, you know, an inspiration, for lack of a better word, to other guys playing defense. You know, if he's going to play that hard, then I got to play that hard sort of thing. And so I think that just elevated their defense even further. And, you know, barring uh, something unexpected, I don't see that changing when he's got Luka Doncic in front of him or Kyrie Irving in front of him. I think he's going to be as hard charging you know, as uh, all out effort 100 percent of the time as we saw in the first round, you know, eight days off for Lou Dort. Maybe that's the, maybe that's the benefit for the <laughs> Thunder. So I like the Thunder to win this series. Winning in six means they got to win in Dallas to, to close out the series, yep. which is an interesting thought. I was trying to decide six or seven. I think I'm going to go with six as well. I don't think they can get it done in five, but. I wouldn't be surprised to see them win it in five. Frankly, I think I would be more surprised to see them win it in seven than I would in five. I think they could close this. I think they could close this series out in seven, especially if they really pull the shutdown on Luca and Kyrie and figure out ways to really force their hand to look elsewhere for answers. Cause I'm with you. I don't think they've got a ton. So we both have the thunder. 
I think it's going to be a heck of a series, though, Bobby. Starts Tuesday night, 8.30 at Paycom Center. That's all the time we've got to preview the series now, but we'll have all sorts of Thunder coverage as this series gets going at selloutcrowd.com. You can find all the stuff there, videos, podcasts, columns, as well as on our mobile app. Download it today. And if you want our content sent straight to your inbox, it's so simple for you. Just sign up for our newsletters at selloutcrowd.com. It's free. It's easy. You'll have all the stuff right in your inbox. This happens to be our first time hearing or watching us. Be sure to subscribe to our show on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And if you like what you hear, please leave us a review. Thanks for joining us. and We'll see you next time.